Hello everyone and welcome back to the Yellow Dog 3D Tips blog. Today we're going to be having a look at how we can use the shadow capture material inside of Arnold. So first things first, let's make sure that Arnold is our renderer inside of Cinema 4D. So in this tutorial we're going to simulate sort of a typical CG situation where you have a HDRI environment map and you have a backplate that you're trying to incorporate CG objects into. So I'm just going to start off by adding a background object into my scene and I'm just going to find a suitable backplate so I'm just going to drag this one here into the material pane and I'm going to texture the background object with that so the next thing is just to align the floor plane of our Cinema 4D scene with the floor plane of our backplate um, so I just downloaded this backplate from hdrmaps.com they got loads of free stuff on there so um, it's really good for practicing this kind of thing here's the one that I used for this tutorial so now that we've got the floor plane aligned um, I'm just going to drop a plane in and I'm just going to stretch it out so it fills the whole area that we're going to be using um, so that's looking quite good um, and what I'm going to do is just drop in our camera um, and I'm going to lock this camera by going to tags, Cinema 4D tags and uh, protection and that's now locked so we can't accidentally move it and now I'm just going to select the plane, go to create and shader and Arnold shader network now we just double click the shader it's just created and click open network editor and within this window we just need to go to surface and shadow mat and just drag that onto the work area um, and within this is where we configure our shadow mat texture so straight away we can tick use scene background so it's going to use the background that we just created um, and we can apply that now to our plane um, but we're not going to see anything just yet because we haven't got any lights or any uh, geometry in the scene so we need to go to plugins cinema 4d to arnold arnold light and sky dome light and this is where we attach our hdri image into the color channel so if we go to the co uh, value type and click texture and then all we need to do is just navigate to the hdr file that we downloaded earlier so um, once we've done that um, our HDRI is sort of in the scene and set up. I'm just going to drop a sphere into the scene and just put it somewhere useful so there looks fine to me. Um, and I'm just going to go to create Arnold surface and just click standard. That's going to make a standard Arnold texture and then just drop that onto the sphere. And I'm just going to create an interactive preview of what we can see. So I'm going to go to plugins, Cinema 4D to Arnold and IPR window. And now we should see our IPR window so we can see what's happening without having to render all the time. And as you can see, the shadow catcher is working. We're getting a nice matte shadow on that back plate. So I'm just going to open this Arnold material that we put on the sphere and I'm going to make it reflective. So I'm going to go down to reflection, put the weight to one um, and then turn the diffuse weight right down. Um, and then I'm going to go to specular and turn the weight of that right up as well um, and turn the roughness down. So we've got this nice mirrored ball effect which is going to help us align our HDRI properly. So as you probably noticed we've got this weird black line across the mirrored ball. So to fix that we need to select the plane, go to tags, Cinema 4D to Arnold tags and drop an Arnold parameters um, tag on there and just untick opaque from within that and that will just hide the re uh, reflection of the black material in the mirrored ball. So the next step is just to select the sky dome light and begin rotating it so it matches the back plate. So we're just looking for that shadow to match the shadows in the back plate and the reflections to look correct. So around this angle is looking pretty good to me. Um, as you can see the shadows are starting to match the angle of the other shadows in the back plate. So this is looking fine for this kind of scene, but if we had a scene where the floor was wet or shiny, we'd need some reflections in this sh um, shadow catcher. So to do that, all we need to do is go into our Arnold um, uh, shader network and open the network editor, go in our shadow ma um, node and just uh, in the specular drop down just click indirect specular and you can see there's a specular highlight now on the uh, shadow catcher so it's not just a shadow catcher it's a reflection catcher as well now obviously that doesn't look right so I'm going to turn it off and if we wanted to change the color of the shadow we go back into the shader network and go into the network editor but if you got sick of opening this network editor all the time you can just select from the shader menu uh, your shadow map and you'll get the same parameters within the one window so under the shadow color um, drop down you can just select any RGB value you want for the shadow and it's obviously going to change the color of it in this case it might be an idea to sample a natural shadow from the back plate and this will just help the CG geometry just sit on that back plate just a little bit better and just help the integration. So the next thing we need to think about is uh, rendering these kind of things. So under the save options in the render settings, just make sure you've got alpha channels um, selected and just um, select an appropriate file name. Um, and I'm just going to turn off the back plate and hit render. And this is going to render really quickly because it's a really simple scene. 
But if we go into the layers and go to uh, single pass, we'll be able to see that there is an alpha channel within that. If we wanted to get rid of some of this noise um, within the render, we need to go to the sky dome light and just change the samples. So I've just changed it from one to three and I'll re-render that. And now you can see the graininess has uh, been greatly reduced. If you wanted to completely remove it, then I suggest just upping the samples to something much higher. So now that that's rendered, I'm just going to look at it in File Explorer. And you can already see in the preview that the Alpha channel is working uh, perfectly. I've just opened it with Photoshop to show you this Alpha channel. So yeah, this could just be dropped over uh, the back plate now and it would look pretty seamlessly composited already. Once again, this has been the Yellow Dog 3D Tips blog. Stay tuned for more 3D tips.